What do a doctor predicting a heart attack, an app detecting spam, and a self-driving car slowing at a red light all have in common? They rely on machines that have been taught using supervised learning to make accurate predictions from data. Imagine you're a clinician with thousands of patient records, age, weight, blood pressure, cholesterol levels, and you want to predict who is at risk of a heart attack. By feeding these labeled examples to a learning algorithm, you can build a model that links patient features to outcomes and alerts you when a new patient falls into a high-risk category. This is supervised learning in action. Supervised learning is the most common form of machine learning. It uses labeled data, pairs of inputs and known responses to teach a model how to predict outcomes. In essence, we give the algorithm flashcards. Here are the features and here is the correct answer. By discovering relationships between features and responses, the model learns to predict the response for new, unseen data. Supervised learning comes in two flavors, classification, where we predict discrete categories like spam, not spam, or defective good parts, and regression, where we predict continuous values like the price of a house or the remaining charge in a battery. A typical supervised learning workflow includes four steps. Data preparation, algorithm selection, model training, and evaluation. You start by collecting realistic training data. If you expect noise in the real world, your training data should include it too. Then you choose an algorithm, logistic regression, decision trees, support vector machines, or neural networks. During training, the algorithm adjusts its internal parameters to minimize errors. Finally, you validate the model on new data to ensure it generalizes well and doesn't overfit. Let's start with classification. Suppose you want to filter out spam emails. You collect a data set of emails labeled as spam or not spam. You might use algorithms like logistic regression or naive Bayes, which predict the probability that an email belongs to a class. Or, you could use K nearest neighbors, which assigns a label to a new email based on the labels of similar emails. These models learn patterns, certain words, senders, or phrases that indicate spam. Classification models are used in medical imaging, speech recognition, and credit scoring. In each case, the response variable is categorical. Is this tumor benign or malignant? Is this recording a wake word or not? Regression models predict continuous values. For example, predicting the remaining charge in an electric vehicle battery is a tough problem because battery characteristics vary with temperature and age. By training a model on time series data, voltage, current, temperature, you can estimate the state of charge. Linear regression is often the first choice because it's simple to train and interpret, but more complex relationships call for nonlinear regression or Gaussian process models. Regression is also used for energy load forecasting, predicting stock prices, disease incidents, and even the remaining life of manufacturing equipment. Some supervised learning algorithms handle both classification and regression. Decision trees split data based on feature thresholds, making them easy to interpret. Support vector machines find the hyperplane that best separates classes or fits a regression line. Neural networks, inspired by the brain, can learn complex patterns by adjusting weights across many layers. These models form the foundation of deep learning, convolutional neural networks for images and recurrent networks for sequences. Even with a chosen algorithm, you need to improve your model. Two powerful techniques are feature engineering and hyperparameter tuning. Feature engineering involves selecting the most relevant variables and transforming them, using techniques like principal component analysis, or non-negative matrix factorization. Hyperparameter tuning means searching for the best settings, learning rate, 
number of layers, regularization parameters that maximize performance. Supervised learning powers countless real-world systems. In healthcare, it helps classify ECG signals and detect arrhythmia. In energy, it forecasts electricity demand and optimizes renewable resources. In the industry, it detects equipment anomalies and prevents failures. Financial institutions use it for credit scoring and algorithmic trading. From diagnosing disease to pricing insurance, supervised learning is the backbone of modern artificial intelligence. Supervised learning is about teaching machines to see patterns and make decisions, whether it's predicting medical outcomes, spotting fraud, or forecasting the future. If you're excited to learn more, subscribe and hit the bell for our upcoming episode on unsupervised learning where we let machines explore data without labels and uncover hidden insights. Drop a comment with your favorite supervised learning application and let's keep exploring the frontiers of AI together.